What's up guys? Welcome back to Thug Life Gaming. I'm your host Matt Rogers and you're watching Tom Clancy's The Division video review. Mother of oh! Christ! Shit, they're behind us! We got it! Just go! Now, now! Dispatch, this is car 2-4. We are over... Within the first minute or two of playing Tom Clancy's The Division, you'll realize that you're in for an experience full of beautiful set pieces and post-apocalyptic mayhem. Now, although I am slightly disappointed that console players will be forced to experience the game in 30 frames per second, and it doesn't nearly look as good as the gameplay demos that have been displayed at gaming conventions leading up to its launch, regardless, it still looks exquisite. I can't count the number of times I just simply stopped playing the game in order to observe the artistry that has gone into it. Whether you're walking around the city, observing the incredibly realistic snowdrop weather engine, or stumbling upon a random building, every single crevice of this game is filled with an impressive amount of detail. Normally this chopper is for pickups from the dark zone only, pulling out highly contaminated material. The Division's visuals aren't the only impressive aspect, the sound quality is also fantastic. Being able to differentiate the difference between an SMG, light machine gun, assault rifle, and sniper can help make the game feel even more realistic when determining what type of opponent that you're about to engage. Listen close enough and you might just pick up on the magnificent soundtrack that the developers over at Ubisoft have orchestrated. The contrast between the relaxing tones of walking through Times Square and the suspense that's created when going rogue in the dark zone help fulfill that theatrical experience that video gamers have come to love. But perhaps my favorite facet of this game has to do with what's called your base of operations. Consisting of three separate wings that gradually build up as you complete missions, what starts off as a feeble safe house eventually turns into a thriving ecosystem full of human character. Witnessing more and more children being medically treated at the pediatric ward or just random civilians hanging up Christmas decorations brings forth a very much needed emotional connection between a player and the game itself. These are my people. This is my city. We're taking it back. Oh. Look, you need to... Yeah, okay. Okay. They're counting on us. Let's not let them down. The very first issue I had with this game occurred as early as possible within the character creation stage. The limited number of options to alter the physical look of your character's face somehow acted as foreshadowing to what would eventually become moderate disappointment. I'm talking of course about the story, plot, or narrative to this game. Whatever you want to call it, the post-apocalyptic theme is incredibly played out. Whether you're logging into your Netflix, Hulu, or Amazon Prime account, it won't take you very long to find a very similar story centered around another man-made virus gone rampant. The sad thing is that The Division somehow manages to create depth to this very generic story. Unfortunately though, you have to go digging for it yourself. The easiest way to do this is by accessing the intel section of your menu and watching the cinematics that you've unlocked by beating the main missions. I think a much more effective direction would have been to trigger these cutscenes organically, either by stumbling upon a boss or by entering a specific location that correlates with the video itself. I'll give you what you want. You want to be the victim? Ah! Well, I'll make you one. I'll make you one! Now, whether or not you consider the lore behind this game to be a very big deal, there is one redeeming factor that somehow managed to excuse all of my negative tension. Take one glance at your map of Manhattan and you'll notice a big red section right smack dab in the middle. That right there is the Dark Zone. This quarantined section of New York City is where the Division truly forms its identity. Pinning you yourself against other agents, 
You can fight alongside them in order to grind and farm for better and better equipment, or you can engage in some PvP combat in order to steal their loot. Now, although it is very fun to discover the different types of NPC factions that are scattered throughout the Dark Zone, or to identify the specific locations where some named bosses are, you'll have the most fun playing the Division when you become an absolute savage. One moment, you'll be waving hello to a fellow agent, or perhaps even doing jumping jacks with them in the middle of the street. Moments later, that very same person that you thought was your friend can murder you in cold blood. It really is that sense of the unknown that makes the Dark Zone so suspenseful and fun. A perfect example of this would be the extractions. In order to use any of the equipment that you manage to come across during your experience in the Dark Zone, it first has to be extracted via helicopter. Now, as you can imagine, this can be pretty damn sketchy, but if done correctly, will result in some speedy upgrades for your character. We're finally starting to get some traction out there. Well, I ran into the guy who runs my neighborhood deli in Queens. He's actually talking about reopening at some point. You know, if I squint, I can almost see New York again. How about that? So how long will you be playing The Division? Well, judging from the time played stat that you can currently see on screen, let's just say I've comfortably broken in my new leather recliner. Once you've hit level 30, an entirely new game opens up for you to enjoy. At that point, the game is solely centered around improving your character's armor and abilities. The skill trees of The Division are fairly well balanced and are diverse enough to create a number of complex scenarios when deciding what type of players will complement your team best. However, I can see people taking issue with the repetitiveness of the endgame. Essentially, you're going to be killing the same named bosses over and over again, with your hopes being that they will drop a piece of desired loot. Ubisoft has countered this by increasing the number of Phoenix credits that these bosses do drop. This is simply a form of currency that players use in order to purchase blueprints for high-level equipment. However, if this farming aspect of the Division's endgame doesn't quite tickle your fancy, then you might find yourself a tad bit disappointed. All jokes aside, I personally enjoy the gear system of this game because of how intricate it really is. Minor and major attributes, as well as gear set bonuses, increase the likelihood of your character feeling very unique when compared to another player. Furthermore, the developers over at Ubisoft have made it much easier to get this gear and a lot more fun by incorporating free software updates that include the new incursion and supply drops in the Dark Zone. Now, just in case you do want to take a break from the strenuous loot grind, I suggest you go check out some of the daily side missions, but especially the collectibles. Echoes, phone recordings, incident reports, and more create a much deeper tone to the setting. They all tell separate stories, but when combined together, they remind the player just how interesting Tom Clancy's The Division truly is. Here! Make it last, okay? The Division was a highly anticipated game. I'm assuming that the multiple launch delays were an immediate result of just simply wanting the game to look amazing. The extensive amount of environmental detail made the wait completely worth it. However, once you have gotten past how beautiful the game looks, you run into its biggest issue, which is the plot. Not only is this post-apocalyptic theme extremely generic, but the small amount of depth that they have created through the main characters never seems to fully grasp any form of real significance. Now, don't get me wrong, this game is a lot of fun. Whether you're considering how balanced the skill trees are or how intricate the gear system is, you'll be hard pressed to find a player that doesn't enjoy the journey of exploring the multiple forms of character builds. The only setback is how repetitive the in-game is. 
My experience of playing this isn't what I expected after watching its reveal at E3, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. To all of my fellow agents out there, it's time to take this city back. Tom Clancy's The Division receives an 8.3 here on Thug Life Gaming. If by some miracle you survive green poison, then nature's decided you deserve to live. The rest of us shouldn't and won't. Godspeed. I'll see you in hell. What's up guys, I hope you enjoyed that Division review, but real quick, before we get out of here, I want to give some recognition to you guys, the fans. So let's start things off with our fan spotlight. This week's winner goes to Gamertag TLG Storm uh, for a number of reasons, but mainly because he's repping the TLG community in his Gamertag, and he consistently leaves positive forms of feedback, whether it be on YouTube comments or simply just sending me messages on Xbox Live. So thank you, man. You definitely deserve the shout out. But now let's find out who got the Thug of the Week. Now, if you yourself want to get the Thug of the Week or perhaps nominate one of your friends or family members, all you have to do is send me an email to thuglifegaming at yahoo.com letting me know what makes you a thug. This week's winner goes to Hey It's Nova, who happens to be an American living in Shanghai, China, who is trying as hard as he can to overcome the language barrier of being a foreigner in that country. Now, I specifically think that you're a great role model for anybody out there that's really challenging themselves to improve upon a skill of any kind. So thank you, man, for your submission. I hope you learn a lot about the Chinese culture. You definitely are a thug. But that is it for this video, guys. Again, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to leave a comment below, click that thumbs up button, share the video with your friends, and subscribe if you're digging the content. But I'll see everybody here in a couple of days. Keep living that life, because that is what thugs do. I'm out of here, guys. Take it easy.